Hey, what's up, guys? So I've got a four part series that is over an hour long on working with MIDI within Studio One. And I wanted to put together a more condensed video with some of my more favorite features of working with MIDI in Studio One. And we're going to take a look at that here. Uh, you can also check out that series if you'd like to see something more in depth up above here. I'll leave a link there. And let's just go ahead and get started. I've got a two bar MIDI part here that is blank. There is no MIDI data within this uh, MIDI part. I've got a presence with a piano preset uh, active on this track. And to begin with, we have several different ways that we can access our MIDI editor. We can come down to the edit button and just click there. We can press F2 while the MIDI part is highlighted, or we can just double click. Now also know that we can actually maximize the editor here and then move this over to another window. We can expand that out like so and have a really broad view of our piano roll and working with our MIDI data. I'm gonna actually click, click this arrow to reattach that. And we're just going to work in this mode because I'd like to show some functions in relation to the MIDI part in our range view. And we are going to cover, you know, some features here. I'm going to go through these really quickly. But before we get to some of the uh, uh, tips and techniques in here, just I want to cover a bit of the navigation because that is incredibly helpful when you're trying to do some editing and working with your track. So knowing how to get around is a very helpful thing. So we can always press W to zoom out in our MIDI editor. We can press E to zoom in. We can also use the ruler here and click, hold, and drag left or right. We can also drag up or down to zoom in and out. We can also hold control and use our mouse wheel to zoom vertically. You can see that piano roll getting larger and smaller there. If we hold control, and shift and use the mouse wheel, then we uh, zoom horizontally. And if I were to zoom in a bit here, just know there's one helpful tip. If we actually double click on our MIDI part, then it's gonna center itself within our editor. So we can see that bar two begins here, which is where our MIDI part begins, and then bar four is where it ends, and we can see bar four here. We also have some sliders here at the bottom for zooming horizontally and vertically. We can click this to zoom. And I'm actually going to go ahead and close this part automation lane down at the bottom by clicking there so we can have a bit more real estate within our editor. And the very first thing that I'd like to mention is when we're working within the editor, sometimes it, we can get a bit lost with where we are in relation to the piano roll. So just notice that. As I move my arrow throughout the editor here, we'll see a faint highlight on our uh, piano roll here, which lets us know what pitch we are actually on or which key we're actually going to be adding or removing or editing our MIDI data on. And we're gonna start over in the left here. And if I double click to add a note, then we can here that the note is auditioned and this is the first thing we'll take a look at so if you don't want that uh, to audition the notes when we add or remove then we can just deselect there and from that point on we can go ahead and add our MIDI notes without that audition feature I'm just gonna select those and press delete I'm not actually gonna leave that turned on for this tutorial we next have a scale feature here. And so if I go ahead and check this box to activate it, we can see that we have these blue highlights. And this is basically going to restrict the vertical positioning of our notes. And we're on C chromatic here right now. So that's why we have, you know, these all highlighted in blue. But if I were to change this to say uh, Dorian, then we can see that we have these blue markers on a limited number of keys. And so if I double click, I can add there because that is part of this scale. But if I try to move this up by click, hold, and dragging, we skip over D and move to uh, C4 there. So this is going to restrict the vertical movement of our MIDI data and place them within the scale that we've chosen. So even if I were to double click on this key here that is not highlighted in blue, it's going to push it down to that next note uh, here, which is A sharp. 
Now, also in our MIDI editor inspector, we have kind of a readout here of some attributes of the currently selected MIDI note that we have. And the cool thing about this is that we can just use our mouse wheel to make adjustments to the selected MIDI note. So the start here, and these are actually, so the first field here is going to be bar. The second is going to be our quarter note. The third is 16th note. And this last one is going to be ticks. So when we make adjustments, we're adjusting those values. And what's cool is that we can just hover over a particular uh, field and then use our mouse wheel to make an adjustment. So if I come to the length and I'm currently on quarter note, the field for quarter note, if I just use my mouse wheel, then I can extend that note out its length and adjust it using only my mouse wheel. If I wanted to change the start, then I can come up to start and just move that using the wheel. And this is going to apply to uh, multiple notes if we have multiple notes selected. So I'll go ahead and add a third in there and just select them all. And say we want to change the length here. I'll come over to the 16th note adjustment and we can see how that works. Now if I select this note here, we also have a velocity feature. So I can just click in that field and say put in 50 and it's going to adjust the velocity I'll bring back our part automation lane. We can see that our velocity has been adjusted to 50. We can see in the readout there. I'll go ahead and hide that. And we also have a mute feature. So while this note is selected, I can click the mute. And then this note becomes grayed out and will not be heard when we play back. I'll go ahead and uncheck that. Now we've seen that we can add notes by double clicking in the editor. And just keep in mind that whether you have snap to grid turned on and your quantize value are both going to determine uh, certain actions within here. So we have this set to eighth notes, so we're adding eighth notes. If we were to change this to a half, then we're going to get that added. And we can see that that is snapping because our snap to grid is on, even though if I double click here, it's going to position our note at the beginning here. So if I deactivate the snap to grid, then wherever we click, it's going to add it exactly at that position, but still adding that note at our quantize value setting here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that snap to grid back on and select a few of these and just delete those out. Now, if the snap to grid is on, we can actually manually set the length by on this second click of our double click, just hold and drag. So I'll now I'm just continuing to hold down the left mouse button and then dragging to manually adjust that length of our note. Now, if we wanted to adjust the length of a group of notes all at once, I'll just go ahead and control A to select all of our groups in here and just come to one note and I'll hold down control. And in, in this way, we're going to adjust the length of all of our MIDI notes at the same time. You can also hold down Alt while clicking at the end of one of these notes to set the others to its ending position. So I'll hold down Alt and click at the end of this note here. And so we can see how that functions there. I'll Control Z to undo. I'm actually going to turn off this scale for the time being. Now we can also use Alt to duplicate a note or a uh, group of selected notes. So I'll hold down alt and just click on this note here and drag. And we see that we are duplicating those. I'm going to keep on dragging. And I think I lost that there. Let me come back. So I'll hold alt. And we can see that we even extended out our MIDI part here by doing that. So I'll control Z to undo. Some other cool features that we can access by using the alt key in tandem with the paint tool is that we can alter the velocity of a note or a group of notes uh, by holding alt with the paint tool active and just click in the center of one note and drag up or down to adjust its velocity. So I will press two to activate the, or three rather, to activate the paint tool and then come to the center of this note here. I'll hold Alt and then dragging up or down. 
we can see that those are all adjusted at once, and of course this can apply just for one note at a time if you'd like. We can hold down Alt with the Paint Tool active to add notes in a consecutive fashion, and the notes will be added, of course, according to our quantized value. So I'll set this to eighth notes, and um, go ahead and hold down Alt, and I'm just gonna click and hold with my left mouse button, and then we can see that we have these consecutive eighth notes that are being added. If I change this to 16th, hold Alt, click and drag, then we can see that those are added. And I can just move up to change the pitch that these are added on as well. And drag back to the left to remove. Now I'm gonna press one to activate the arrow tool. Now we can also split our notes or uh, say we have this longer note here, I'll extend that out. We can right click and then choose to split at grid and we can see that that one note will then be split according to our quantized value here, which we have set to 16th notes. So that's another method, but you can see that using Alt with the paint tool can be a bit quicker. And I'm gonna control Z. We can transpose our, a note or a group of notes, I'll control A to select all of the notes, uh, by using the arrow on our QWERTY keyboard, the up and down arrow, so I'll use the up arrow and the down arrow. Now if we'd like to shift by a whole octave, we can hold down shift and use our up and down arrow. Now at the top here we have a AQ button here which stands for auto quantize and if I apply that and then make a change to our quantize value here, then we'll see that these will be adjusted. As long as you have your notes selected, they're going to adjust when you make changes to your quantized value here. I'll change this to half, and we can see that that changes. If I deselect the notes, make a change here, then we can see they are not affected. So these do need to be actively selected. I'll come to half, let's see, one bar, and then we can see that now that they are affected when we make changes here. So if, if this has been happening to you and you don't were wondering why that was, then just pay attention to whether you have auto quantize turned on or not. I'm going to go ahead and deactivate that. Now, if you just like to simply select all or quantize all of the MIDI, MIDI notes within a MIDI part, you can alternatively let me. I'm going to press N to deactivate the uh, snap to grid and just move these out of position and press in to reactivate that snap to grid. We can always come up above here, select our MIDI part, and then press Q, and then that will uh, snap all of our MIDI notes within the part that we have selected as well. Now we also have the split tool available to us within the editor, so if I press two to activate the split tool, we can see that we our icon, the arrow tool is gone, we have a little knife there and some crosshairs. Now the crosshairs will give you a visual representation of where your cuts will be happening. So you wanna place that below the note that you wanna cut. And notice that our vertical line is going to snap based on our quantized value. Right now we have it set to bar, so we're not really seeing. Until we get there, we can see that that snaps. But if we change this value to say, eighth notes, then we can see quite clearly that that is snapping to our eighth note subdivisions within the editor. So if we wanted to cut here, place our horizontal line below that note, and now we've cut that. If you'd like to have more precision or more precise control over where you make your cuts, just press in to deactivate the snap to grid. And then in this way, we can cut anywhere that we'd like. I'm gonna control Z to undo those cuts and press one to activate the arrow tool. And I'm gonna zoom in a bit here and just to show you the follow feature. So if you're doing some extensive editing within here and it's jumping around on you, I'm gonna press the decimal symbol to come back to the beginning here. So I'm gonna press F. 
and we can see that we're no longer jumping. So those are some horrible chords. Um, so if this has been moving around on you and you just want it to stay in the same place so you can keep hearing uh, what you're working on, particularly if you have set up a loop up above here, then just press F to activate or deactivate that follow. This is the button here or auto scroll uh, that you would need to, that works in tandem with F on your QWERTY keyboard. And the last thing we'll take a brief look at is the action menu. So if we have a group of notes selected here, we have action up above. We can click on this arrow there and we now have a menu with a plethora of different actions that we can apply to the notes that we have selected. So just this is something else that you can explore here. You know, for instance, we've seen transposing with the up and down arrows. We can also click that and make some adjustments here to transpose. We can even set all of the notes to a particular pitch by doing that here. I'll go ahead and cancel out, but just know that you have other features available within the action menu. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up here. I hope that maybe you've seen something that you've been wanting to know how to do and you're just like, Eureka, yes, this is what I needed to know. If there are some other features, again, check out that series that I did or leave a question below in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys.